I can't believe that didn't. Okay. So here we go. Um, yeah, no, I'm not, don't worry. I'm not going to pause it. Um, so uh, we're going to go back through the characters um, and what was in the box. So first things first. I got this and this outside of the box. Okay. So this one here is uh, a forgotten spell. Uh, that you get separate. So it's a, uh, I think it's a new forgotten spell that they didn't pack with the originals. Now, what you can see here is a little glimpse into the foil aspect. No, we're not on 720. Don't worry. I, I've got all confidence <laughs> that it's not going to crash. I'm sure it won't. Well, it's a bit of a disaster to start with, let's be honest. Um, but hopefully it won't, it's not going to be a true unboxing in the sense that you're going to see everything new as I see it new. So at least I've had a little bit of a practice before we get going. Um, so this is the uh, the foil nature, which I absolutely love about the, the Forgotten Spells. It makes them uh, so much more special. And that's, yeah, beautiful. Uh, black Lymph, um, which looks pretty nice, especially this. Look at this. Look at... The Forgotten Spells deck. Choose one card and add it to your hand and gain a, um, a Black Rose point, a Power Point. Brilliant. Or lose two and then literally destroy the Black Rose. Oh, this is just mean. Destroy the Black Rose room and take its room token. So VPs at the end of the game and you're stopping your opponents from gaining any Forgotten Spells. Love it. Now, the pack that you get with the uh, separate from the box is because the ones they packed in the box are just too big to fit onto the player boards. So they printed out a, a, a new set, which are slightly smaller, which fit in. So you can see here, there's a size difference. Because it was way too tight uh, to fit in the player boards, and now they've made them smaller, so it fits in nice and perfect. Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, uh, right, okay, moving on to the unboxing-ish. <laughs> so again, I can only apologise enough uh, for some things that we're going to... Uh, by the way, um, oops, a few things to add to that. Uh, the box comes with the sleeve, the Sator box sleeve, okay, uh, to keep your box in. And um, what's really nice about this, it tells you the new things that are in there. So... Obviously, a ton of miniatures, 73 new miniatures, 17 new mages, 13 new rooms, uh, mage expansion, so more tokens, uh, six mage sheets, which I really appreciate, uh, 24 eight, uh, mages with asymmetric skills. So I'll show you those in a minute, but we've certainly got some asymmetric skills. Fantastic. Just extends the game. 11 new schools of magic. That is crazy. It's so good. And 27 new evocations, of course. Crazy, crazy. Uh, so it's really nice to see that. Okay, so when you open up the box. Now, uh, there's been lots of talk about the box. Yes, it's it's like a cardboard delivery box. It's the best way to, to describe it. It's not phenomenal qu quality. It isn't phenomenal quality. But it will hold it enough. And I think considering, oops, considering how much, how much extra stuff we get with the, just the stretch goals. You remember, this is just stretch goals. Um, I think it's just amazing. I love that. Okay, so these are the new player boards. Okay, same size as the old ones, um, but now they're not mage specific. You've got the recess here where you can put your mage cards in. So grabbing Tessa again, place the mage, and you can see now that they fit in nice and perfect. Few things, uh, obviously if you know the, how to play the game, you'll know this anyway. But you've got your hand size limit, uh, you've got your health, your movement, and your attack value. You've got a space to put your uh, destroyed rooms. I hope they've not just shrunk it and your rooms don't f uh, do fit in there perfectly. Uh, trophies, your two standard actions, and really importantly, this is what track, uh, denotes what health you have. So Tessa has 11 health, and 12, there's 12 health as maximum, and we can see there there's where her maximum health would be.
Uh, 11, hang on, uh, what have we got? Uh, so we've got 11 new schools, so 17. Uh, was there only one in the uh, Kronos, yeah? Only one extra magic school? Then that is true, 18 if that's true. So 17 schools of magic with core and uh, stretch goals, uh, plus whatever ones else is you, whatever else you've got. Which is crazy. That's a crazy amount of extra content. Same, same, uh, same layout as, as normal with the uh, quick spell, your three spells, your evocation slots underneath, your uh, grimoire, your memories, your active quests, and your completed quests. So exactly the same as it was before, uh, just with this additional space. You can flip over your character card, and then you get your asymmetric abilities here. It also does change this quite massively. This change is really quite big um, for many of the characters. Uh, so we'll go through those as well. Now, what I really like, as someone who didn't purchase, and I, I got massive regret from this, um, that I didn't purchase the Hidden Thorns. And I really want it. But they've supplied us with six player boards. We now have tons of, mini, uh, of uh, mages. So we can actually play up to six players. Yeah, you haven't got your, uh, your you go, go to your room tile. Um, but still, uh, we've got plenty to play with that we could uh, potentially uh, play that fifth or sixth player while waiting for the Hidden Thorns to come to retail, which I'm really hoping for. Okay, so player boards. Uh, then, <laughs> this is where you're going to notice it's not a true unboxing, because you're going to notice quite a few slots missing for the miniatures. Here's the cardboard. We've got some crossover uh, cardboard here. Uh, this is, this is uh, signed temporary, I think. This is the Perilean, and uh, after this video, I just realised I've got to talk about everything I talked about before. Uh, after this video, I'm planning on doing a solo playthrough uh, using a kind of custom deck building mechanic. You've got your mages, mage tokens, uh, custom tokens. You've got a few things that might happen because of uh, the legendary scenarios, the kind of the campaign, as it were. The, these are the little um, number donations for uh, solo mode. Uh, solo mode room cardboard. So oh, it's going to be so nice playing with real high quality components rather than my printed out on cardboard components. And then we come to the miniatures. So as I said, I've taken all the mages out. So all the mages have been taken out. Um, and I will go through those. Uh, I'll bring them up over to here and show you the miniatures in detail. And wow, are you in for a treat. The miniatures... They're, they're phenomenal. They're better than the core box. They are better than the core box. Uh, so just, just out of this world. So let's start with Illumbra. Illumbra. Okay. Um, Illumbra has seven cards in hand, 12 health. So a bit more health than the average. Uh, two movement to attack. All the mages will have two movement to attack. Illumbra's may miniature is here so this is the first mage miniature and just look at the detail absolutely smashing it's amazing and this is why i didn't want to do it at 720p uh, kyle <laughs> because i wanted to show you the style of the miniatures he's got quite inhuman hands he is blood magic mage um but a really nice pose it just looks so good as a pose and uh oh, beautiful detail i mean even to the detail of the hands. This, you've got to remember, this is a pre-assembled miniature um, for a board game. And the quality of the miniature is just superb. Just out of this world. Oh, you're kidding me. Have we lost live stream again? No, no, it doesn't say so. I think... Oh, no. No, no, sorry. Oh, no. I think we're still on. Are we still on? Please tell me we're still on. <laughs> that would be an absolute disaster if that was the case. I'll carry on as if we are still on. Um, next, we've got his uh, asymmetric side. And this is what I mean. So we go from 7 and 12 to 6 and 9. But look at this. 3 movement, 3 damage on a, on a, on a punch. Wow. Uh, plus, this could be plus 1. I don't know. I don't, well, I'll have to see what these are. Um, discard a maybe discard a card for two damage. I don't know what all these icons mean, and I, I think it's in the rule book in terms of what they are. 
Okay, but that's Illumbria. Oh, we're still on, cool. Um, talking of which, sorry, I realised I'd taken out the rule book. That was the first thing to look at. And what I was really hoping to look for was the solo play. So this is the uh, solo sub, which is identical to the print and play. So there's three pre-construct decks. And what I really want to use for the solo is kind of a bit like practice and just choose whatever schools of magic I want uh, to, to like mash together and try and play solo. So that's, that's how the mechanic I use works. You've also got your campaign mode, which is awesome. So you've got these different uh, areas you go to and <laughs> different setups. Uh, you play through. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be so good. Um, so really looking forward to that. And of course, Ezio and the Assassin's Creed is linked to that as well. But yeah, that's so cool. Ah, here we go. Here's all the here's all the iconography for the asymmetric mages. So end game gets plus one for each trophy token the mage possession. So that's Alumbria's um, asymmetric power uh, to get the extra. I love that by the way. Asymmetric powers. That's gonna the that's gonna extend the game so much. Make it so much more replayable. Okay, next one. We move to. God, how do you pronounce this? I have no idea. Um, Tlahulkul. Tlahulkul? I've got no idea how to pronounce that. Uh, at the end of the rule book, no? Yeah, yeah, it is at the end of the rule book. Yep. Um, yeah, again, a bit more health than, um, than the average. Uh, he uh, sticks to pretty much the same health and pretty much the same stats. So he doesn't really change much in terms of his stats. But of course, he's got his uh, asymmetric abilities. Uh, let's have a look at his miniature. And just look at, look at the quality of the detail in the staff and the shins. The, these kind of like rune, Mayan runic symbols. Absolutely phenomenal. There's even texture. I don't know if this has come out on the camera, but there's texture on the cloak as well. So... One thing about these, these miniatures is all the detail has been modelled on the miniature. So when you come to painting, you won't have to do any freehand painting at all. And I'm, I'm planning on doing contrast paints for all these miniatures. And it's just going gonna, gonna to love these miniatures. It's going to absolutely love them. And they are going to come out so well. These are so much better than the core game miniatures, I would, I would say. So much more detail. Absolutely outstanding. And no mould lines on this particular one. Well, certainly no noticeable mould lines. Phenomenal. So that's the ele Elementalist. Okay. Right, we'll carry on. Start with Telmia, who was, I think he was one of the original cast members, if you like, of the game, uh, before they changed it up. Uh, so a little bit more on av than average on his hand size uh, with this character. Relatively low health. Asymmetric side, look at that. So he goes from 10 and 9 to 11 and 10. But his disadvantage is he hits only for one. Because he's a true mage. He's not about uh, physically smashing his opponent's mages. He's about um, having plenty of cards in his hand and casting all those spells. Awesome. And his miniature. A bit of a bent staff there. So a bit of hot water. Yeah, definitely a bit of... Hot water. Now he is a chronomancer, I think. So he's got his like uh, his hourglass here. Uh, the, the is the the sands of time, as it were. But again, just look at the detail of this um, that's been modelled onto this miniature. Absolutely outstanding. It's going to be so good to paint, and it's going to pick. It's going to recess those contrast paints. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, fantastic detail in the face. And across the whole miniature, to be honest. Tell me, uh, the true mage, you could say. Okay, now we'll keep moving on. So next we move on to Ariana, who's got a little bit more health uh, than average, as it were. Flip her over. Again, very similar to Tell me, uh, 11 and 10 from 8 and 11, but losing that one damage in melee okay and that's an easy way to just do damage without a reaction as it were uh, so a really nice way of doing it um again lots of things to happen i think if she's got the crown 
at the end of the game, she gets three victory points. Maybe. But it's all in the, in the back of the book anyway. Ariana's miniature. Again, fantastic detail yet again. Really nice sculpt. Even from the, the sleeves. I mean, you, you can see the definition of detail between a hand and the sleeve. That's so good for a board game miniature. Can I say better than Simon? I think so. Look at the detail of the face. Wow, just awesome. Uh, so that's Ariana. Next, we have Howard, the Void uh, Mage. Bit extra health than normal. Turn it over, and it's pretty much the same. It's, it's decent, that's decent stats uh, across the board there. Pretty decent stats, quite, quite average, quite normal. But pretty decent as an asymmetric mage. And here he is with his rituals. He's all about demonology, isn't he? So he's uh, a... <laughs> look, at, look at the book. There's a little demon face coming out of the book. <laughs> that is cool. But again, the quality of detail. Really appreciate it. Really do appreciate it. As a sculptor. As, as a painter, sorry. Uh, and this one's... Good. And he's actually got... I think he's the only one who's got a unique base where he's got this massive rock that he's standing on. Um, yeah, amazing. Um, one little problem, if you look down his ankle, where they've joined, that's not great. That's not great. It's, you've got kind of like a, a mould line. That might need to be a little bit of green stuff. But, you know, we're picking out little hairs here. Um, you know, the quality of the muscle tone and everything, that's oh, it's going to come out so well when it's painted. So that was Howard. Next, we move on to Old Ducas, which is the sign temper, temper, tempore um, crossover. And Old Ducas uh, has got the average, but slightly more cards in hand. Flip him over. He stays pretty much uh, those with those average stats, which is good. He, um, wow. Again, fantastic detail. Beautiful miniature. Leaning back perhaps a bit too much. Maybe a little bit back too much. Um, so again, a bit of hot water, put him back straight a little bit more. Don't know. He's kind of pushing his chest out. Look at the detail. Beautiful. With that kind of more futuristic armour that Ducas has, or old Ducas. Cersei's next with her mind control. <laughs> Love this, with the six hands coming out. Again, a really nice sculpt. Flowing cape. Plenty of detail on that. The hair and everything. Guys, I'm so sorry that uh, that the unboxing went ahead without you. I'm, I'm really quite gutted about it. Sorry, I didn't show you Cersei's card. Uh, so a little bit more health, which is good for a mine character, actually. And then stays about the same with one less... Um, damage and only two special unique powers so perhaps they are quite powerful okay next we have Vivian who has the highest uh, the maximum health uh, but the lowest hand size of course because of that and then he oh he's got three movement and then he's all, it looks like he's all about punching people <laughs> causing instability in the room and so forth 10 health. Nice. He's a bit of a beast. Oops. Here's his miniature. Very gothic style, isn't it? God, he looks like... Um, what am I thinking of? Is it Final Fantasy? It's got a character that looks pretty much identical to this. I'm trying to remember. Again, beautiful detail on the cloak. Look at that. Just really deep features, which will really help with the painting, as I said before. <laughs> Fantastic miniature. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay, next one. Let's keep it going. We'll go to the Invisible Man, the Chavon, who's got a higher than average uh, hand size. Turn him over. And he's got no hitting power, 
but he can move three. I would say movement's probably... Right, it's, it's hard to know until we actually play these asymmetric mages, but I'd imagine movement's more important than uh, than hitting, but it depends on the situation. Love this miniature. The way they've shown it being invisible by attaching parts to uh, the staff and the cloak it works so well. And what I only just realised when I looked at this miniature myself is that he's holding a mask, and inside his cloak... He's got loads and loads of face masks, which he's so those people that like open up their cloaks say, "Do you want to buy a watch? Do you want to buy a watch?" It's a little bit like that, but with all these different face masks, a bit like Game of Thrones in terms of like doing all these different faces, so he can be many different personas uh, as the mage. A little bit of a bent staff here. May need to look at that with some hot water, but a fantastic mage. That was just so good, so so good. Very clever. Okay, moving on. We've got Korax, who's uh, slightly more health than average. Uh, then kind of losing some stats. Um, but again, probably uh, quite a lot of uh, different things. So uh, plus one for trophies, plus one for damage rooms, maybe, uh, at the end of the game. So he could really take over at the end of the game, potentially. Beautiful. I love this miniature. It's more of like a natural kind of mage. I mean, look, look at that book, the detail. You've got the Black Rose spell book here. You've got this kind of bird on his thing. Oh, wow, look at the detail, the bird. Beautiful. And just the sheer detail on the miniature. It's crazy. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. That's a cool, that's a cool miniature. This is beard. Okay, moving on. We've got Arthur Vox. Who's the bard. Love this miniature. Um, he, he goes up in health and things. So, yeah, he's quite nice as an asymmetric mage. But again, it does depend on their spells and everything else. Uh, let's keep going. Let's have a look at the miniature for Arthur Vox. And this is just so good. With the wolf pelt. Detail in the muscle tone you can see there and his face. Uh, and you've got plenty, plenty of detail in the hands of all these miniatures. You can really, de you can see the definition between their fingers and everything else. Um, fur and all different types of textures going on. Really, really impressive. And the loot is absolutely great. That's fantastic. Uh, real nice miniature. Maybe a little bit of a mold line down. Yeah, a bit of a mold line down his leg there. Um and down the other side as well. But, you know, that's the, that's the first true mould line I've seen, really. All the miniatures have been so good. So impressed. And look at that face and amazing hairdo. So cool. Uh, that's a very cool model. All right, moving on to uh, Mickey Mouse. Sorry, I mean, uh, Ducas. Now uh, you've got... Yeah. The Techno Viking, yeah, <laughs> very much so. Um, you've got the uh, 10, ten uh, cards and 9 health, so again, a bit more on the old card draw than average. Uh, goes quite heavily down um, with his stats, so perhaps he does get some really good powers um, that are ongoing. <laughs> Look at this for a minute, should I? <laughs> Is it a Sprigget? I can't remember. In uh, Nova Atus Renaissance, um, you've got a load of these. I think they're, I think they're called Sprigets or Spr I think something like that. So that's where, where this comes from. But a, a easy nod to Mickey Mouse and Fantasia here with a mop. Uh, you've got the, um, the cloak. You've got the ears that have been sewn onto his hat uh, as, as the mage, the Mickey Mouse mage. And of course, you've got his evocation, which is, which is literally straight from... It, that actually looks like a Disney miniature. Uh, if Disney were going to do a miniature, that's what it would look like. And there's a few others that, that have that kind of Disney feel to them. So just absolutely fantastic. It's so good. Such a good little miniature. Love that. Talking of which, Bella is next. Uh, slightly higher health. And uh, goes with a lot of speed again. I think the speed characters and the asymmetric is going to be real powerful. And look at that for a miniature. It's just such a beautiful miniature. The detail, the crispness, 
just amazing. It really does look like a kind of Wizard of Oz style miniature. And as you know, um, Dorothy. You can imagine that as a Dorothy. And then she, I think, comes with this amazingly cute miniature. Carrying the black rose. Little fairy. That's <laughs> so cool. Amazing. And as a little bonus, we've also got the cat on the books, on the mage books. Crabbing a mage hat. Look at the detail on the feathers of the hat, even. So good. So, so good. Okay, uh, and then the last one I've got from this top row is Skulltor. Uh, straight from He-Man, of course. Uh, slightly extra health. Flip him over, and he pretty much stays as what say. But as you would imagine, he likes undead characters. So uh, let's have a look at this miniature again. Look at the detail. The crisp detail on his face. Sword's a bit short. Imagine it would be a bigger short. Uh, that needs straightening. So a bit of hot water and cold water. But again, oh, beautiful. Look at that cloak. The detail on that cloak. <sighs> They smashed it out of the park with the detail on these miniatures. These miniatures are crazy. And we haven't seen the best ones yet either. Just be aware. These are just the mages, some of the mages. Wow, okay. So that's all the mages and a couple of extras. Uh, a couple of the extra um, uh, little miniatures. Just put those in there. Right, let's go through the top row. So first of all, you get your replacement Andromedas. Now with placements for your pins uh, to show that your, your evocations. But I was looking at this earlier um, when I opened the box first of all. And I think the detail is crisper than the original one. Now, I could be wrong there. I might just be thinking that. But look, look at the cloak. I'm sure it wasn't as detailed as this. The detail wasn't as deeply moulded than this miniature is. So I think they've improved the process in this, in this Sator box um, compared to the, uh, the original core box. Absolutely beautiful. I do love that Andromeda sculpt. I think it's absolutely great. I also really appreciate uh, these boxes are not as tight fitting as the um, as the core box. So hopefully you won't get that paint coming off from putting them in and out of the box. Now you do get a first player token, the crown token. Not first player token, the crown token, sorry. Um, which is just phenomenal. Look at the size of that. It's a bit OTT, but it, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, they have the little plastic um, uh, bevel for the uh, Perilium. Then we move on to the elements. Oh, we'll start with the enchantments. So these are the enchanted blades. You get three of these evocations. Uh, that you, I believe this is going to be Bronte's, Bronte's um, uh, evocation. Uh, or any, anyone who does enchantment. They're going to need a little bit of hot water to get them standing a little bit taller. They seem a bit sloping backwards for my liking then we move on to the fire elementals which are like the dogs with a cool fire do but you'll notice with all the elementals the quality of the detail and you can see with the kind of mayan runes uh plastered all over the element elemental uh, evocations just really amazing detail even to the if you look at the kind of um around the wrists and so forth beautiful detail Absolutely gorgeous detail. So that's the fire elemental. Then we've got a, what seems like a nod to Never Ending Story with Rock Eater. Is it Rock Eater? Rock Chomper? Can't remember. Um, but again, the, the painting of these is going to be just amazing. It's really, especially the contrast. The contrast paints are just literally going to love these miniatures. And then you can see all the runic details. I mean, absolutely smashing out of the park. It's so nice. Just so impressed. Two of those. Two of each of the elementals. That's all the elementals on this row. Then we've got the Tengu, which is actually a, um, a Japanese mythological uh, samurai uh, clan, as it were. It's in... Um, what's it in? It's in Rising Sun, as uh, really... I did, kind of. Uh, but also in uh, Bushido, which is a samurai game, I, tabletop samurai game I play. Uh, there is a Tengu clan, a whole um, clan that you can 
build your army around. But anyway, um, bird people, if you like, with the Pinocchio mask, um, the the kind of feather uh, fans for uh, for slicing, and then you've got the chicken feet as well. Fantastic detail. Yet again, a great miniature. Quite big as well. Two of them. And then you've got the Dagons from Demonology. I really, I really like this. They're like hands coming out of his shoulder. Uh, a really nice touch. They look great. Um, and again, plenty of detail in there for the paintings, painters of you out there. These have also got a unique base as well. Come to think of it. And, it, what, and I believe it was, if we're talking this is Demonology. Demonology was... Yep. And he also had that kind of base as well. So they're following on the same with uh, with his base, just as, as we saw before. Kratos approve. <laughs> cool. Uh, that's the first tray. Uh, so that's all the mages went in here. And then we got some plenty of evocations. Tell you what, the weight of this box is crazy. So moving on to the next, the next tray, uh, which I rudely put back to show an unboxing. Uh, so you've got, you've got covers for each of the trays, which is, which I do appreciate. It's protect the miniatures. Um, I had taken off the other one, so apologies about that. And we've got three remaining um, mages to go through. So we're going to start with, I believe, my favourite miniature for mages, which is Bronte. So Bronte is the ogre uh, forge master. He's a weaponsmith, it seems like. Um, and he's a cyclops. So it's, he's, he's also, it's a cyclops forge rune. So I don't know if that's to do with Bronte. It could well be. Um, slightly more health than average. And then his health goes up again. And look at the hit. Wow. Lots of hits, hits, and more hits. Uh, it seems like his, his uh, unique asymmetric powers are linked to. But look at this miniature. Now, number one, it's the size of the biggest mage out there because he's the big ogre. But look at the detail on that. And you've got like the book, you've got a sword down there, you've got an axe on his back, he's carrying a massive hammer. Uh, he's got his dreadlocks coming down. Beautiful kind of uh, Celtic trim to his cloak. Uh, you've got all the, uh, the, um, the kind of tools down here. He's got his hammer for the hammer and anvil here. Um, just absolutely beautiful. Now, the only problem with it is it's got a slight S shape to his hammer, and it, that's not going to be easy to uh, straighten. But I'm not too fussed about that, especially with the amount of detail. And just to show you uh, the size difference, we are talking about a big boy here. He is uh, with his nice pot belly. Look at the size of that. It's just such a nice miniature. It just holds really well as well. Um, beautiful touch, tone on the uh, on the muscle. The detail that's literally going to pop with uh, contrast paints. That's going to be a, just such a great miniature to paint with contrasts. Really looking forward. And his flaming um, hammer for the anvil. Love that. Absolutely love that miniature. Next one comes along is the Cartog Cartomancer, is it? Um, Baba Yaga, who uses the cards, like, uh, which is so cool. Um, uh, slightly more in terms of hand size, as you would imagine. Um, but strangely enough, you flip over to the uh, asymmetric side and she loses hand size and goes up in health. So that's a bit weird. Um, but we will see how it plays. Um, what a miniature. <laughs> chicken leg going up to the chicken to this house and then she's riding the house. Um, again, just crazy detail in that miniature. Um, it's really, really, really good. Love that stilettos on it <laughs> with a little hand of cards. I think I'm trying to see here that might even have detail on the cards, which is just mental. If that's the case, that is crazy. If there is detail on the cards, like little dips or something like that, that is that is nuts in terms of how much detail is on that. There is Baba Yaga, a really interesting school of magic. I'm really keen to try out. Leaving our final character, of course, is the Japanese um, demonologist, I guess, or uh, Oni, uh, which is Tora. Slightly higher health than average. 
uh, turning the page and hits go up and health goes up. And all about these demonology, another demonology like, um, I think a little bit like Howard in the same instance. This is the miniature. Gone in the Shinto, uh, kind of classic. Um, I, can't, I can't remember what exactly it was called. The Japanese, um, is it Japanese God or something that uh, links to this? I know it's in Rising Sun. You get this, that you pray to, you say, it acts as a Shinto. Um, and there he is riding atop this uh, this lion. So good. And again, the detail. It's not, I'll tell you what, it's not far off Games Workshop. I'm generally saying that now. In terms of the detail, the texture that they've put into this minute, these miniatures, the detail, the pose, it's not far off Games Workshop at all. Just absolutely astonished by the, the detail in these miniatures. So good. So there is Tora and our final mage. So there is our... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 extra mages to go with our four from the core box, <laughs> which is which is nuts in its own right. 21 mages to play with, <sighs> all with their own unique um, spells as well. Uh, moving on, carry on with the elementalists. I love this one. This is the wind elemental. Um, and again, again, part of the reason for this is, is stance. This reminds me of, uh, if you played the Tomb Raider games, uh, the most recent one, the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I want to say. Um, this reminds me kind of of, of that. Uh, I think it, it just looks so good. This is kind of Aztec-style wind elemental. And again, just look at the detail. <sighs> Crazy. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Sharp as you like. Okay, so that's two of those. Uh, and then, of course, the Earth Elemental, which is really just just fantastic sculpt. So you've got like, the, all the rock and the mud, and then you've got some skeletons uh, stuck in, into that, which act kind of like the character as the head and the body. Uh, you've got all different bits coming out of, this, of, the, of the, um, the Earth, as it were. You've got swords stuck in the top, or, uh, kind of tusk or horn. Uh, you've got chains coming out of it. This looks so good. I love that miniature. I think it's such a clever miniature. A um, little bit of a, a moulding part left. It just needs to be scraped off. But beautiful miniature. Two of them. Now we move on to the Oni, uh, which is a Japanese demon. Um, and again, <laughs> uh, fantastic. Fit. I love this. This is such a great miniature. Uh, look at the heads that he's been collecting. Even they are so highly detailed. It's crazy. And look at that weapon. Wowzers, you wouldn't be on the other end of that. Absolutely gorgeous. And all the armour of the legs. and Yeah, just, just crazy. So that's two of those. Sticking with the Japanese theme. Let's get Kitsune. Uh, this is what a sculpt. That is a dynamic sculpt, if I've ever seen one. With the uh, five tails, fox's tail. Um, you've got the fox's face there. Beautiful straight uh, swords, by the way. The only issue I foresee is this. If you look there, I don't know if the camera's picking up. That is a, definitely a weak, weak point. That is a massive weak point. Uh, that arm could easily fall off. Um, so out of all the miniatures in the whole box, I love this miniature. I think it's one of the best miniatures, but it is also one of the most fragile links that that arm in particular, that arm, not so much, but that arm definitely, uh, that's going to have to, yeah, just be careful with that. But what a beautiful model. Absolutely. Just crazy how good these models are. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, uh, Gilliam, you're absolutely right. 24 mages with Hidden Thorn and Kronos and two or three more with uh, Hyperton, yeah. Uh, with the new um, expansion that came with Nova Atus. So, yeah, definitely. And I think there's some more with Nova Atus as well. So, crossover. So, we're talking about just a crazy amount of content for replayability. 
Clockwork Gollum's next, and I was really interested to see how, how well the detail came out for this one, because I was actually really looking forward to this one, and I'm not disappointed at all. You've got the barrels, obviously, uh, you've got the clock face, uh, good detail there, but th this is what it's all about. When this gets painted up, this is going to look so good, uh, with all the cogs, the uh, turning crank, um, just a beautiful miniature and very unique. I love the fact... They've come up with a very unique model there. Uh, and you get three of those as well. Um, only one slot, so... Yeah. I'm not sure what that means, um, but I guess we'll find out. And the last miniatures in this, and by far not the least in this tray, is the Minotaur. <laughs> Just have a look at this beast. There is a standard character, and there's the Minotaur. You get two of these carrying this huge, huge bit of uh, tower, bit of uh, castle, about to lob it. Fantastic detail yet again, absolutely fantastic detail on the whole miniature as a whole. It's just absolutely beautiful, and it's going to come out so well when it's painted. I cannot wait to paint all this stuff. Uh, so there's going to be a... If you've been following my channel recently... You'll know that I've been doing live streams for Super Fancy Brawl. I've got one more character of Super Fancy Brawl to complete, uh, Kalel. And then it's getting straight onto this. Uh, I kind of painted up some Lord of the Rings uh, rangers. I, I undercoated those, but <laughs> forget that. <laughs> these have come through. I'm desperate to paint these now. Um, what a miniature. What a miniature. It's not even a miniature, is it? It's just huge. Right, so that's the second tray. And then finally moving on, let's move those for a second. We'll go, we'll go to those, the biggins, last of all. So the trays come out pretty well, um, but they're also quite nice and snug in the box as well. So they're going to, even turning this upside down or whatever it might be, uh, it's, it's not going to change it. And in fact, even when I first opened it up, there were no miniatures out of their place. There were no miniatures out of their place. Um, don't worry, that's, that should be there. Okay, so um, moving on to the final tray, uh, or the final layer with miniatures, and uh, let's start with Ezio. So we've got Ezio from Assassin's Creed, and mine has got, I've noticed this, mine has got a little bit of a, a deform, deformity in the base there. Now, I'm just going to get a Stanley blade and just cut that off and make it flat, but that will certainly rock the miniature not hugely but a little bit also that will need some hot water and straightening his hidden blade but wow look at the detail you can see the the, the mechanics of the hidden blade absolute gorgeous miniature that's such a nice miniature great pose great detail even like like the hem of the cloak just oh, superb Throughout this whole range of miniatures, just breathtaking, to be completely honest. <laughs> what a miniature. <laughs> Love that. Are all the base flat? Well, uh, I was just going to say that. Um, that one, definitely not. That one, 100% not, in terms of Ezio. In terms of all the others, yeah. Yep. All of my mages are, are flat. Just testing them now. Yep, yeah. yeah, all the mages are flat based and it looks like some of the bigger ones, maybe not. Because uh, I've just literally seen, uh, so the pigmen, which you get changed to from Cersei spells, I believe. There is a slight bow to that. But they sit on the table flush. They do sit on the table flush, so perhaps that's just an optical illusion, maybe. Let's have a look at the pigman. Pretty ugly, but wow, what a miniature. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. With his rumbling tummy, little hooves. So good. You get three of them. So three pigmen. Oops. Well, that's not too easy. There we go. That looks like a... I'll tell you what. They look like really warped bases. Look at that. Oops, sorry. That is a... That is a warped base, but when you put it onto the table, it's really not that bad. It, I mean, it is warped. It is warped. That one in particular. So not all the bases, it seems like, um, 
all the bases are 100% flat, but I would say the vast majority, pretty much all of them are pretty good. Uh, Kappa, another demon, another demon. Love this miniature. Reminds me of The Witcher 3, but what a miniature. I like the pose. I love the design. I really like that miniature. I think that's a fantastic sculpt. Yeah, it just reminds me of Witcher 3, that for some reason. <laughs> like a to tortoise shell. <laughs> get two of them. Three pigmen. We get... I can't remember what this is called. Um, the snake assassin. Like a Japanese assassin. Wow! Look at that. This, reminds, ugh, this, this actually reminds me a bit of the ring. Which is a bit, a bit spooky. Uh, with the snake tail all the way around. Bit of a mould line down the bottom there for the uh, snake part. But again, we're talking about making little picky parts about this miniature. Again, the, just the detail of the hand. I don't know if I can pick that up on the camera, but look at the detail of the hand. It's crazy. The face is so good. <laughs> that is one spooky miniature. That again is, is bowed. But... It, but again, you put it on the table and it doesn't make much difference at all. Oh, um, did a little good news for the age. For the age. Uh, mate. Oh, for the mage. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's really good news for the mage. That's the ones you really want to be flat because they're going to be the ones most of the time. The pigmen have a real mutant ninja turtle pad guy. For yes, they do. Uh, what was it Bebop and... Um Oh, what are they called? The two, the two baddies, uh, head, like baddie sidekicks. Bebop. I forgot. Uh, then we've got the Abomination. So in the Transmutation spell list, uh, spell deck, you can turn into an Abomination. And I, I really love this miniature. You get three of them. But it's partway through Transmutating, I think, because you've got an arm out here and you've got the head going in. So you can, you can imagine this is partway through Transmutating. And then it's going to turn into the abomination. That's how I see it. Really nice sized miniature. Nice chunky miniature. Uh, really beautiful sculpt again. Look at the hair strands and everything. These are going to, these are going to be so nice to paint. Look at that face inside. Just amazing. Just yeah. Anyway, um, moving on to. Two of, uh, start, now we're starting the big boys. We're starting the biggest miniatures in the game. We're starting with Bullo. <laughs> wow. Uh, now this, I would say this, this is on par with Games Workshop. L look at that. So crisp in detail. So beautiful in design. Got the little nicks in the armor, plenty of detail there. Ah, that's the, you might argue that's the only problem, and this is a problem with um, pre, oh, sorry, with pre-assembled is the gap in between his neck there. Again, a bit of green stuff would sort that out, no problem. But again, it, that's part of the armor, so does that matter much? Probably not. But wow, just wow, looks awesome. The only thing is, the sword kind of stops here. I don't know if it's supposed to be. Kind of like represented as stuck in the ground. I think so. Um, but yeah. Bebop and Rocksteady. Thank you. Rocksteady. That's the one. <laughs> one of my favourite uh, forgotten cards. Forgotten spells. Um, whether it will still will be with all the extra ones, I don't know. But the Infamy of Cree. And man, do I love this miniature. I absolutely love this miniature. I think this is my favourite miniature in the game. And Bronte is my favourite mage miniature in the game. This is just sublime. Throwing these pillars around. You've got the kind of Greek style uh, to, 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 to the miniature itself. Being Creek, Crete. Sorry. Um, armour. Everything about it. I just absolutely love the pose. It looks big. It looks menacing. Just as it is in the game. 
and you chuck him on the board and he just roams around doing four damage to all miniatures in every room he enters. I think it's four damage to every miniature he, he enters. And it's persistent. He's just going to stay in there until he's destroyed. So, just so good. So, so good. I'm so, so pleased with that miniature. Uh, that was the one I was really waiting for. Okay. Uh, right. Leaving the final two miniatures. Which come in their own little uh, little box. Um, that goes... I think it just goes like that. Because you've got the ones going around it. So, first of all, Hashima. The evocation. I think it's an evocation. Um, so look at the base. Look at that base. You've got the hammer, which has uh, caused debris to shoot across. He's grabbing down and squashing everything he's holding on to. The muscle detail is just phenomenal. Yeah, you've got uh, a joint here. Uh, again, a bit of green stuff. We'll sort that out if you wanted to. Um, but again, beautiful detail. Got a couple of wings even. This guy. But look at that hammer. Wowzers. That's beautiful. And this strange looking creature. <laughs> but so cool. So, so cool. And look at, look at the base. That's just... Some would say that's over the top. I say that's awesome. Uh, leaving on to our final and biggest miniature, the next dragon, uh, which you, I believe you you change into, you mutate into. And I'll tell you what, the detail. Uh, there you are. There you are being possessed by this thing or being changed into it. Um, it's just, look, look at the bones around the neck. Uh, you've got a kind of... This this reminds me of Nemesis. Uh, the, the pose and the tail. It does remind me of Nemesis a bit. I know the original sculpt had it kind of up on its tail. But I just feel this is this is more compact. And it's more befitting for a board game, I think. Uh, than if it was absolutely massively high. Like they originally thought. They originally uh, suggested it was going to be. But again, absolute gorgeous detail. And I'm, I've, really, I've really taken to this model. Uh, since, since I've seen it. And now I've got it in my hands. I've really taken to this model. I think it's fantastic. It's a beautiful miniature. And talk about board presence when that comes onto the board. Yep, yep, I, I agree. It's Kratos. Uh, the Infamy Crete is definitely Kratos. So, that is the miniatures. If you want to call them miniatures. Just a ludicrous, a ludicrous amount of content. Absolutely crazy, that, that extra amount of content. If you consider that is stretch goals. I mean, I, don't, I, I can't think of a single Kickstarter that had that much stretch goals um, included with it. Uh, that much extra content as part of a Kickstarter exclusive stretch goals. Um, you're talking about three times the amount of content in the core box, which is just crazy, crazy value. Right, moving on to the cards and so forth. So, I've opened these up already. So first of all, you get uh, new room effects. So there's plenty of new rooms to keep us occupied with in uh, in this particular set. Oh, that reminds me. For the legendary scenario, you've got some chests. Beautiful chests as well. You can use them in anything. Um, and then one nasty little mimic who's there to catch you out. I would presume in the scenario itself. So with in terms of the rooms, and again, I think I think the production has just improved since the core box. Uh, because another thing, if you look okay. sorry. So if you look at this, look, no glue residue. No glue residue at all in these recesses. And it's the same with the player boards. Uh, if you look at your core box, you'll see that there's glue residue on a lot of it. Whatever they've done in the production of this of this wave two is just it's just so good, so crisp. So we've got the Cyclops Forge, maybe from Bronte. There he is, boom, amazing. Uh, Ale House, maybe uh, the Bard. Uh, Eerie Machinery, that's certainly uh, Telmia. Cursed Temple. 
Probably uh, Alumbre, being the Blood Mage, I would imagine. Garden of Ice and Fire, not sure what that is. It's maybe a bit of a nod to Game of Thrones. Cyclops Room, so another... Cy- they do like the Cyclops in this game, don't they? Uh, Card Room for uh, Baba Yaga. Pigman's Room, <laughs> where we'll see Bebop. Is it, I think it... Uh, is Bebop the pig? Or is it Rocksteady? Holog... Hollerologium, which is what they use in Nova Atus Renaissance, as which is a fantastic mechanic. Uh, that's kind of one of the main reasons that sold me to the to to, to back that game. The theatre, maybe Cersei, Clinging Swamp, Tanner de Troy, Troll. Sorry, that's the Troll Cave. And uh, I know this has been shown, but there's loads of little Easter egg type things. The original core box, LMS Studios. There's probably tons of it around here. Um, what's that? Arkham Horror? I, think not. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so that's quite funny. And of course, the Assassin's Brotherhood room. So really clean, really clean production, which I really do appreciate. Okay. So going back to the cards... You get, um, for some reason, you get three of these. So I think these may have been called wrong or there was a, something wrong. Bebop is the pig. Right, cool. Bebop. I'm going to call them not pig man. I'm going to call them Bebops. Um, so you've got conspiracy, necromancy, and illusion. Uh, and now these uh, kind of elements are really going to take effect with some of the uh, mages that you've got. You've got the new room effects. And you've got the solo room effects, uh, which is, if you've seen my previous video when I did solo mode, uh, you'll see that uh, I printed this off and stuck it on some cardboard. So it's nice to have a proper card for it. So the new schools of man- magic are Cartomancy, which is about the cards, Void, Enchantment, Chronomancy, Demonology, Bardic, Blood, Elementalism, Omnia, Trickery, and Mind. Wowzers. We have got so much new stuff. It is awesome. Um, so just going through the packs of cards we get in, in the um, in this, we've got obviously the uh, all the quests and the events. We've got a quest and events. We've got the evocations and some stuff, some equipment for the uh, legendary scenario for the campaign. So plenty of cards there to play with. I mean, they reprinted... I think they reprinted everything in terms of the cards. Uh, so you just replace those with... Um, so they've all been uh, rioted and all changed up. Um, I'm just going to have a look in here a minute. This is the only one I'm going to open up because I want to see what else is special and new in this. So we've got some... Wow. Cool equipment, which is really cool, which has health. Actually, was this... Was equipment linked to the enchantment school? I can't remember. Uh, consumables. You've got a ton of equipment. You've got... You've got the seven sins. Virtue, apocalypse, holiness. Well, that, well and extra. Vengeance. Black Rose shards of power. Again, so I think this is all linked to legendary scenarios linked to the campaign. And then you've got, of course... Uh, hang on a minute. Oh, yeah. Then you've got all the evocations, including Hashimas. Uh, there's some more equipment. Actually, there's some more equipment there. Look at those. Ah, right. The, ah, sorry. That's why I got confused with the equipment. These are the uh, enchantment. So this is how the enchantment school of magic works. As you get these equipment out, you put them over to places, and then you can do stuff from them. So you, your spells can be cast from your equipment and things like that. Really clever idea. Uh, oh wow these are cool look at the art on these I don't think we had the art like that on the uh, core box right 4 damage oh kappa <gasps> and they're immune to other mages spells what okay anyway plenty 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 there uh, to have fun with and of course the Hashima as well um, I'm not going to open up the quest cards Loads of space in the box. You've got all of this area here as well uh, that you can use up as well. In fact, I think 
uh, this would be a good place to put these cards, it seems. So actually, it might be worth putting all of the all of the cards in this box, maybe. I don't know. It'll be very heavy. Uh, then I want to go straight to these. So these are reprints of all the forgotten. Look how many forgotten spells we're going to get. Oh, my Lord. But these are all of them in foil, in beautiful foil. Those forgotten spells, those uber powerful spells. And this time, I will be playing it correctly. I used to play um, the forgotten spells that they get discarded to your memories and not discarded out of the game. Uh, so now I do know that oh, that is beautiful. Makes them proper special. Oh, oh you become a Necro Dragon. Oh, dear. Oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, oh, somewhat. Oh, these are beautiful. Infamy of Crete, my favourite. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I can't tell you how how much I love those. <laughs> yeah, I know. Foil or two, right? Um, with the school of Kronos, there is equipment. Oh, okay. With Kronos, there's equipment. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, they are. Oh, they're just beautiful. Absolute summon below in the black rose room the shift all other mages into it and then below hits everyone. Love it. You can suffer five damage. Activate the black rose without discarding any cards. What? Oh, okay, okay, right. <laughs> so I get ahead of myself here a little bit. So wow, they are amazing. Uh, then I've opened up one of the uh, one, one, one of the packs. Um, it seems. Uh, oh, these are the uh, mage-specific spells uh, that you get for all of the... Well, that's not all of the characters. There must be another pack um, in here. And we got loads and loads of spells. So this will take a fair old while to go through. Uh, but I'll take some requests in a minute anyway. Um, so, yeah. So that's kind of the contents <laughs> in a snapshot. Yeah, there are... Tons and tons of cards, including reprints uh, of the corrected cards. There's the conspiracy, um, but we've—I mean, it's just—it's just crazy. That is just a lot of sleeving. There we go, the necromancy. It's just that is just crazy. Uh, illusion. Look at it all. So, <laughs> oh wow. So that was um, kind of the unboxing of. The Black Rose Wars Sator box. Um, apologies about literally spending an hour unboxing it uh, before realising I wasn't live uh, to re-unbox it. Uh, so I do not understand that's not a full, un a proper unboxing, um, and it's a shame because when I was seeing things for the first time, um, I tried to replicate my <laughs> my excitement as I went through the second time. But the miniatures, the miniatures are outstanding. They are so good in quality. When you get yours through, you will see, wow, it's amazing. It's so good. It's so, so good. Is there a mage spell of the Hidden Thorn Mage in it? The Hidden Thorn Mage. Do you mean a forgotten spell? Gilliam? I'm not quite sure what you mean by the Hidden Thorn Mage. Hidden Thorn Mage. I mean... Um, <laughs> Heal all of your wounds, then defeat the major at the most. What? Look at this one. Uh, Echo of Revenge. When you are defeated, you may void the defeat and heal all of your wounds, then defeat the major that had the most uh, damage on you, resolving the defeat as if you inflicted the most damage. What? Yep, we can have a look at some evocation cards, 100%. Um, so, evocation cards, let's have a little look. Yeah, I, I want to see those as well. So, we'll, should we, we'll leave Hashimura to the end. So, let me come up here. So, in terms of the equipment, in terms of equipment cards, uh, we've got different types. So, we've got the battle axe, the bracers, uh, and each equipment has a health. And it also does a special effect. So if you've got the battle axe, 
Um, and I believe, I believe, I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure these kind of go as evocations. So you can have three pieces of equipment anytime. So basically, uh, you're probably going to be putting this on Bronte. He's normally swinging in with two damage. You put this on one of his evocations and he's going to be swinging in for three damage, for example. Uh, all of your spells with elements they, they are considered wild in terms of elements, which is really, really handy for some spells, of course. Inflict one damage to whoever infl inflicts to you three or more with a single effect. So it's like a, what do you call it, a retaliation. Range of your attack is actually two away. Oh no, hang on. Yes, the range of your attack is two hexes away, not in the same hex. Okay, that's pretty nuts. Um, your punch is zero. Ah, is all models in that area, that means. And the hammer. Okay, this is a massive hammer he's got. Every time you draw a quest, draw two instead, choose one and discard the other. That's really nice. So many times you can't you find it so hard to do your um your quests. Your movement and and damage are decreased by one. Buckets can be removed only by losing two or destroying them. Ah, so I'm gonna reckon you put that on someone else. That would make sense, right? So you place buckets onto an opponent mage, and then, that's really mean. I love it. I love it. That's what I love about this game. It's so mean. Uh, that's horrible. Right, so that's all the equipment. Cards. Uh, moving on to Kappa, the demon. I was mentioning him. One movement, four damage, which is really nice, but only one health. And the reason why is because Kappa can be targeted by your own spells, but only by your spells. Kappa can be targeted by your spells, but only by your spells. Does that, does that mean he can be... I presume he can be targeted by evocations, though. That must be true. Kitsune. The next demon. Movement 2, damage 2, 3 health. Quite standard. Instead of movement, the Kitsune can let you... draw one card from the library. Obviously not forgotten spells. That would be ridiculously OP. But uh, that's really nice. To get cards into your hand, that's really nice. And I love that miniature. I love this art as well. I'm not sure. For the, do we have this art? Yeah, we did. Yeah, really nice. Nuri Ona. Right, that's what it's called. Two movement, three damage, three health. Standard, no special actions. The Oni, two, four damage, two health. Instead of movement, the Oni can make another demon move. Ooh, control another demon. That's nice, especially a Kappa with the four damage. Nice. The Tengu. Two movement, one damage, two health. Instead of damage, though, the Tengu may make a mage in the same area lose one power point. So that's just that's just plain mean, but love it. Yes, equipment goes. I thought so. Oh, well, there's loads of stuff. Uh, may we see the evocation cards? Yeah, uh, no spell specific for the two mages in the expansion. Right, specific. Uh, great. Yes, equipment goes. All right, cool. Um Chantico, which I think is the fire uh, elemental, basically. Um, it's two movement, two attack, two health. And attacks have a range of one, which is really, really handy. This is the wind elemental. Ehekatil. Three, three, three. Standard. The uh, rock eater. Two, two, five. Instead of movement, you can place instability in its room. That's always strong. The Atlua. One, four, three. First time it defeats a model during the evocation phase. It may wow. It may immediately move two and hit for four. So it send these after. I mean, I've only got one movement, admittedly, but send them after uh, after the opponent's evocation. That's awesome. Minotaur, one uh, movement, two damage, four um, for da uh, for health. But the caveat to this, because it's such a big miniature, its attacks have a one. Hex rain uh, damage, so all miniatures in that hex, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's all miniatures in that hex, one away. I'm sure that's true. Clockwork Golem 223. It may activate during any phase. Once per round, a mage can only have one clock. Oh, right. You don't have to wait to the evocation phase. That's crazy. That's crazy good. Love that. And that's why it's only got one pink, so you can only have one of them. I love that. I love the Clockwork Golem. That's so good. The Dancing Blades. 
232. It can never take more than one damage within a single effect. That's good. So they're not going to be one-shotted, which is always nice. Rosario de Silia. Um, 203. Instead of damaging, he can heal two to a model within range one. So a little bit of a support evocation there. There's the Abomination. 2-3 and whatever your health of your mage is. Um, muted, mutated Pigman. And that symbol means that it's the mage that turns into him. 2-2 two, two, and whatever it is. But the Muted Pigman cannot be cannot be activated. Sorry, the Mutated Pigman's room cannot be activated. So you can't activate as a Pigman, obviously. But also you can... I read that to say that you can kind of block other people activating a room. I don't know. I'm not quite sure why we've got five of them for five players. I don't know. There we got five of them. They're the evocations, I believe. Hang on. Is that all the evocations? No, that isn't, is it? Okay. Uh, so there must be some more. I'm going to say, here we go. Found them. We've got reprints, it looks like, of um, some of the evocations. Um, oops. Bone Knights, Mutant Altars, Malcolias. So this, they've just reprinted everything else. Oh, Infamy Creed, I love this. Yeah, four to all models on each model in that room. Six, I love Infamy Creed, if you haven't noticed yet. Uh, so this is a reprint of all the core box ones. Let's just open them up and find it. So, uh, what's your most anticipated... Now you've seen them all. What's your most anticipated one to actually see yourselves in terms of models? Who do you want to see the most? And what I think I'll do is I'll start taking requests of who you want me to paint first as well. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, anyone ask. Anyone ask what you want to see and I'll uh, show it you. Um, ooh, ooh, what are they? Oh, this is the AI. This is the AI. So these are the evocations for the uh, solo. Put those to the side. What are they? Oh. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, no, I think these are... Is this old Ducus's um, signed te Tempore, I think. I think they signed tem Tempore crossover. Um, oh, here we go. I think there's some more here. Right. Uh, let's put those there. Right. Oh, more Pigmen. <laughs> so another Pigmen. <laughs> wow. Uh, there's... Oh, here we go. Here's, here's the rest. The Dagon, 2-1-3. Instead of damage, Dagon can place one instability. When defeated or removed, he places two instability. Ooh, that is awesome. That is awesome. I mean, people are pretty just going to leave him alone because he's only doing one damage, but still. Um, he's just going to keep doing instability. I love that. Ichabod, the spoiled cat. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. <laughs> Cannot be targeted by area effect spells. And the Nimbo... Dancing broom, 222. Before acting, shift to room with a something treasure chest. Instead of damage, it can remove one instability. I'm not really sure what that is. Trap? No, that doesn't make sense. I'm not sure what that is. I think that says a treasure chest, I think. Ezio. Does not take damage, cannot be chosen as a target, cannot be the target of effects or active it traps. When you summon him, target a mage. After each action of the target mage, remove Ezio one step towards him. If Ezio enters the target room, remove all damage from his mage's sheet, remove the mage to his cell and gain his trophy. Then discard the card and remove Ezio. So basically he's an assassin. Every single time, but he cannot take damage, cannot be chosen as target, cannot be target of effects or activate traps. Basically you can't stop him. You just gotta keep running away from him. 
<laughs> Love it. That's so different. Oh, there it is. Room infestation. Ooh. Amazing. Animated objects can hit. Flooding. And pink elephants. Oh, there are some tokens for this stuff. Uh, below, here we go. 244. If it's in the black room, it can't be targeted by spells or suffer damages. Or suffer damage, that should be. At the beginning of the cleanup phase, if it's not in the black room's room, it suffers one damage and has moved to the black rose room. Okay, fair enough. That's pretty nice. Necro dragon. Here we go. Two, five, whatever your uh, mage's health is. It cannot be moved, removed by spells. Its attacks have a range of one. Can convert activations into damages. Remove a token on this card. Uh, so you're going to put him on with a certain number of tokens. Only when you are defeated. When you remove the last, remove this evocation. So you're going to have multiple lives. And is it two tokens? Probably. For the two spaces. I think. And again, these have got tokens as well, I imagine. Maybe. Okay. So I think... I think that's all the evocations. And then you've got some more events and some quests there. Right. First paint Bebop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Right. Um, that was evocations. Um, any requests on wanting to see uh, some of the figures? Oh, sorry. Hashima. Hashima, Hashima, Hashima. So here's Hashima. Um, and this is his actions. Okay. So you could charge. Which is move to and inflict three damage on a model in the room. You can move one, then inflict one to a model one away. You can shift your mage into that model's room and then do a hit again. Devastating attack. Hashima inflicts two damage at, at zero, so all models in that area. Then Hashima inflicts two damage on a model, single model, one away. Fire dash. Hashmir can move to inflicting one damage to all models in the rooms it passes through, including the destination room. Or slaughter. Move one, inflict three to Is there models. Does that mean all models? In that room in, in his same room as him? That's a bit unclear. The tiger also gains a poison token. Oof. Which we'll have to look at the room book, rule book to find out what that actually does. Can we see the mage personal spells? 100% as I've actually opened them up anyway. Uh, if I can find out where I put them. Uh, oh yeah, down here. Right, here we go. Mage personal spells. So Vivian first. Uh, Fraga. She's de Vivian, sorry, he. I think it's a he actually. Um, he's got a lot of powerful spells. Inflict two to all models in target room. All mages affected can only move... A maximum of one every time they move until the end of the turn. Pretty pretty big. Pretty good. On the other, flip side, inflict three to all models in target room. That's strong. Inflict two to all models in adjacent room with a two range. What? Okay, that's ridiculous. Three damage to all models in the target room. Then two, model, two damage to all models in an adjacent room. That's crazy. I like that. Uh, here we go for the Elementalist. I can't pronounce his name. Sula Shruna. I can't remember. Look at the first four cards of Magic School. From those... Uh, library, I presume that means. From those cards, you may draw two with a fire element or a earth... And or earth element. Reshuffle all the others. So that's basically grabbing two cards from the deck. Uh, and this is the same, but then with water and wind. So that's grabbing... Trying to grab specific elements to, to trigger... His cards in the elementalist, uh, elementalism uh, card deck. Now we go to Torah. Flick one to the target model within two range. Until the end of the turn, every time the target moves, you may move. That's nice to get around the board. Um, or inflict one to the target model, two away. You may shift one of your evocations into the target's room. That evocation can immediately attack. Ooh, ooh, that is painful. That is beautiful. I love that. That is horrible, but beautiful. School tour, pay one power point. The target undead act under your control, so that doesn't have to be your evocation, of course. You may activate the room where the target undead finishes his action. 
Wow, that's strong. I know you have to pay a power point, but wow, that's good. Pay one to play a action spell. I can't. Think, I forgot the proper name for it. It's like a action activating spell uh, from your hand. That's that's nice. A bit situational, and the fact you have to play this card to play another card. I'm not sure, but that's really nice. That I'm not really sure about. Tell me, pay one. PowerPoint. Copy effect of any one of your, um, again, I can't remember the name of the spell, uh, like a support spell, should we call it, already played. The element and target remain the same. You cannot copy a forgotten spell. Nice. That could be really, really beneficial. Copy the effect of any of your active spells already played. Element and target same. You cannot play a, a copy a forgotten spell. You do have to pay power points, which is never good, but that could really help you out, especially if you have to play on the fly. Uh, so that's part of them. Uh, there are more somewhere. I've got to try and find them now. Uh, so let's open up some more. Okay, uh, let's not have got some more spells. That's just more spells. Oh my god, this is so much sleeving to do. <laughs> Some more spells. Is that the flower? Yes, it is. Put that around. So many cards. Aha! Here we go. Okay. Ariana. Look at your memories and draw two. Very strong. So keep memories of the discarded cards and you can just look at all of them and just decide which two you want. Look at your memories, draw one and then gain a power point. Wow, that, but they are very powerful. Of Arf, Arthur Vox. Um, if the target is defeated by the end of the turn, you gain one of their trophies. Okay, that's quite nice. Steal, steal a trophy. Uh, if the target is defeated within the end of this turn, you gain two power points. Carter Mancy, Baba Yaga. Lose one power point to play a uh, oh, support spell, whatever it's called, from your hand. Actually, has anyone said? Nope. Um, discard three to gain two. That's quite nice. Getting power points just for nothing is always strong. Bella. Target evocation acts immediately under your control. Instead of hitting, the evocation heals as many wounds as the power value of that evocation to a model in the same area. That's nice. Take over someone else's evocation. Um, uh, the evocation acts. An axe. It says axe, so it'll move. You can move it, and then you can heal one of your evocations or Bella. Summer Rosario de Cilia in the target room. It can act immediately. So that's getting uh, old Rosario out of the frame. Bronte, summon an equipment evocation on your choice under your control from any school in play. Any school in play. Okay. I'm not quite understanding that. Equipment evocation. Have they got specific, have the equipment evocations got specific schools of magic that are tied to? Maybe. Remove target equipment. Summon that equipment under your control. Okay. I, I don't know how that plays. I, I, I've got to be honest. I don't really understand how that plays equipment. I'd have to read up on that. Cersei. It's a trap. Target beast act immediate under your control. If, it's a, uh, if it hits a mage, the beast suffers two damage as well. That's nice. And here we are. Target mage becomes a mutated pig man. And they also lose one power point. That is what Cersei's about. <laughs> Horrible. Um, Korax, is it Korax? Or Korvax? Uh, move the target one. Inflict two damage to him and her or her. And then one to all models in an adjacent room. Nice. Or inflict one to the target mage. Move the target up to two movement 
Every time he or she enters a room with another mage, inflict one to both of them. <laughs> nice. And that's three range. Now, uh, oh, what was he called? It's unpronounceable, was it? Dr. Chevillian or something like that. Uh, these are traps. So both of his, uh, his personal cards are trap ones. When a mage enters a room, suffer one. And you play his or her spell. Oh, wow. I <laughs> love it. Or suffer, or they suffer four. God, they suffer one and you get to play. Wow. That's awesome. When a mage enters a room, purple room, you may immediately move one and cast your next spell. That's good, but that is really good. Ducus, move up to two. You can move, you can move one of the instabilities from your starting room to the room where you stop. Ah, so you can move instability. Ooh. Summon Nimbo. If he's already in play, you can take control of him. Take his card from the actual controller. Or heal two on yourself. A construct in play acts under your control. Nice. Out of turn react, uh, activations of evocations. Nice. Alumbra. Uh, you may move one and hit. Inflict an additional two damage with this damage with this hit. Then suffer one from the Black Rose afterwards. <laughs> nice. So thematic for blood magic. You may move one in an attack, like hit. If the attacked target is in a room with another model, that model may can hit under your control. <laughs> I love it. Model. So that's infamy a creep possibility there. That's crazy. Howard. Target mage cannot target you with any spell with a target range i think that is with the target range uh gain one power point or summon a copy of one of your demons in the target room the demon can oh that's really nice that's so thematic to him old Ducus place two instability in target room then activate that room that's crazy good look at the first four quests of the previous moon exchange one of these with one of yours reshuffle the others back into the same decks and gain a power point again really nice to be able to manipulate um uh quests in this game was that everyone i think it was everyone i think uh there is a minimum of two school with equipment minimum of two school oh uh, okay cool thank you yeah uh just open up the other card packs just to check i haven't missed anything specific I think we've had some of those. We? Yeah, we really did. Um, I'm just going to play some packs of cards just to make sure I've got got the right. Oh, there's a lot of cards, isn't there? Oh my holy gosh! Um, mm -hmm. And then this one is okay. Jeez. Jeez Louise, so many cards. Any other requests while I'm opening these up? You can look at, so I can show you some mini the miniatures again, a bit more closer up, in a bit more detail, or any particular schools of magic you want me to show you, or anything else of what you've seen. But yeah, I mean, honestly, the miniatures, in terms of wow factor, the miniatures are phenomenal. But in terms of play replayability and enhancing the game, these spells are crazy. All right, that's just the, uh, the illusion. And um, draw the other ones. So there is not the personal spell from the Hidden Thorn base game in the Seda. I Is that... You're telling me that um, you don't get the personal spells in the Hidden Thorn box? Really? That's not good. That's a bit rubbish. They go with those. Yeah, that's not great. I've got to be honest. Because... I don't think so. Uh, to answer your question, I don't think the personal spells are in here, unless they're in this pack here. I'll just have a little look for you. Necromancy, no, and transmutation. So no, uh, I don't believe so. 
Oh, sorry, there's another two packs. <laughs> oh my god, that's so many cards. Destruction. Conspiracy. Last pack. Last chance. But not in a good... Ah, okay. So there were mistakes in the language. Um, unless they're in here, they're not. So no, I don't know where they are. Apologies. Right, that's... Um, that's a crazy amount of cards. Um, that's interesting, hang on. What were these though? No, so there's one, there's one, there's one, and what are, they, what are these a minute? Hang on. No, I can't talk enough. No. So sorry, uh, Gilliam, it looks like no. They do not have the hidden forms. Thorns, they have not redone them. <laughs> Look how many cards that is. That's ludicrous. Ludicrous amount of content. Right, okay, uh, I'm just going to have a little look at some of these uh, these spells. Uh, I'm going to start with Blood Magic. Uh, this is one I've been really keen to see. Um, so I'll just start going through these, but if anyone's got any specific requests, what are we looking at about... Uh, no idea. Yeah, uh, we're on about an hour and a half. Okay, so until your next spell or physical action, uh, you cannot suffer any damage. Game one. Okay, that's pretty nice to start with. Target mage loses all physical actions. Oof, harsh. If they don't have physical actions, they lose two... That's Well, that's ridiculously good, just to start with. This is a defensive protection spell. Next, damage you suffer. Whoever attacked you suffers one for each poison he has. Assign two poison token if they have none. Ooh. Nice poison. I like that. Ignore the next damage. Uh... Change one of the damages um, with with one of your colours and assign one poison token to the target that attempted to inflict the damage on you. Nice. Next defeated mage. The trap this is, and this is anywhere. Inflict two and assign one poison token to all models in adjacent rooms. <laughs> I love it. Or each poison token he or she has also counts as damage from you when calculating the biggest contributor to the defeat. That's quite nice. Oh, um, obviously this is quite important, uh, linked to Blood Magic. Summon the Hashimir action, devastating attack, then you may move one. So, do you become the Hashimir? I, I believe you become the Hashimir and you do this. Inflict two to all models in all adjacent rooms, use a Hashimir action, yeah. So you turn into like the Hashimir very briefly, I think, and do that action. You may move two Hashimir. Use a Hashima action. Okay, I'm going to have to read up about Hashima. I don't know if you turn into the Hashima, or if you just literally summon it, and then... Because it, it's personal. I think you turn into it, because it's a, it's a target, it's, it's personal. Slaughter, then you move one. Inflict three to the target, then two to a different target, one away from the first. Just strong damage. Transfer up to three dam of your damage onto the target. <laughs> Harsh. Shift it into the target's room. See, that doesn't make sense to me. Shift Hashima. Some of the Hashima action charge. Then you may move one. Or perhaps Hashima doesn't act until you do. You summon the actions for it. Maybe that's what happens. Looks like it. God, there's loads of different spells. Defeat target mage with at least six health. Uh, six damage, sorry. Resolve the defeat normally. If Hashima is in room one away, you gain an additional one. Change uh, change the colour, basically, of the damage on a target. Then you heal two on yourself. If Hashima is in room within one, you inflict one to the target. You may move one to hit. If, Ash if Hashima is in an adjacent room, choose inflict two or use a Hashima action. Inflict three and assign a poison token. Inflict one and assign three poison uh, tokens to the target. Inflict one and change one for each poison token the target has. Shift into a room with... 
Blood, I'll tell you what, Blood looks really, really powerful for two player. And the more players you have, the more mages you have, I guess, the less powerful Blood becomes. This Blood Magic. Shift in the room with a mage that has at least one poison token and you may hit them. Until the end of the turn, every time you hit a mage with at least one poison token, you gain an... That's massive. Until your next spell or physical action, you cannot suffer. Oh, that's the same. And then that's the same. Wow. Nice. Very nice. I, I definitely think that's very strong um, for a low player count. Because um, then you can just keep putting poison, poison count is galore on them. You start in the Black Rose or Throne Room, not sure which. It doesn't... It didn't say, I don't think, on the uh, evocation thing. I just got Hashemir action. Not sure. Just checking I didn't have a Hashemir card. I don't remember seeing one. Hmm. Don't know. I, I I really don't know. Oh, no idea. Okay. So plenty of fun. I guess what what we really want to see is the forgotten spells. I'll do these, and then if there are no requests, I will finish the live stream. Oops. Uh. And then I can start my solo playthrough, which I will live stream. I will be uh, live streaming the solo playthrough as well, uh, but on a different live stream. So, Death Delirium. Inflict three to each model in play that has at least one damage. All models. That's crazy. Inflict eight to the target model. If the target hasn't been defeated by the end of the game, remove all of its eight that remains. So that's that, that's situational. You have to be sure of that one. Um Devastation. Each mage within two loses three. Oh, this is crazy. This is a ridiculous spell. Uh, loses three power points. Gain two for each up to a maximum of six. <sighs> Inflict two on each model within two from your current room. Then flip uh, or switch three damage total on any of them. That's total. Not huge. Seven to the unlucky target model, so just straight to seven damage, or place five instability in target room. Really nice disintegration is really nice spell. Can get you that uh, that room to uh, trophy. I've already read that one. Echo of revenge. Oh, hang on a minute. I just read that is. We've got this one as well, haven't we? I've already read that one. Viscerate, target model that has already has at least one damage and defeat it. <laughs> Two away. Crazy. Inflict five on target model. Target's protection spells may not be triggered. That could be really strong because what you don't want to get is uh, is that damage sent to yourself. That'd be horrendous. Uh, Infamy of Crete. I love this one. Just read this. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Choose two rooms adjacent to the target room. They could be anywhere on the board. Other than the throne room and Black Rose room, of course, and immediately destroy them, taking their tokens. That is nuts to start with. And then you can either do that or summon the uh, Infamy of Creep in the Tiger room. And then he can act immediately. So you can basically wipe out a, a space on the board straight away. That is so good. Intertwined Fate. Look at the top four quests from the previous moon deck. Choose one and complete it. Getting its reward and gaining two power points. Huge. Each mage in the target room discards their quick spell. Uh, gain two for each effective mage up to a maximum of six. That's what you want to do straight away. Inflict three on each model in play. The effective mages may not move during the next turn. Pretty good if there's a lot of mages. Uh, inflict three on each model in play. Effective mage may not activate during the next turn. So this was particularly good if... Um... Hang on a minute. On each model in play. The effect of, that includes you, no? That'd be very harsh if it includes you. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway. I don't think it does. I don't think your spells target you, I, I believe. 
Uh, will I do... Oh, hang on. Uh, they have spoke about it on one of the news on the Kickstarter page. Oh, okay. Will you do an unboxing of Inferno and the other expansion? If I if I had it, yes, but I don't have the other expansions. I literally got the core box. Um, I just got the core box for Black Rose Wars. Uh, it was all I can afford during my time while playing a bunch of Kickstarters. Um, do I do I have uh, FOMO and uh, and jealousy? A hundred percent, yes. I've seen an unboxing of the Inferno, and man, it looks me- crazy good. Lucifer, pfft, I'm really regretting that so i'm gonna be trying to get those when they come to retail uh and of course the hidden thorns as well when a mage enters room you may steal four from them in oh that's handy i think that's a gray room yes that's a gray room or in a yellow room when the model ends inflict six on it if the target is immediate it's defeated gain six no one else wow soul entrapment that's awesome time stop Cast two spells from your hand, gain two power points. Nice. Each mage must discard one of their ready active spells, gain four <laughs> power points. Crone of, uh, Crone of the uh, Eternal. So I presume this is a copy of one from the Chrono expansion. Summon Chrono, where you summon becomes a stable. Take the rune token. You cannot select blue runes. Of foot. That's nice as well. Lose three power points to play four spells from your hand. What? I mean, you're losing three power points, but geez, that could be a turn. Magister Memories, you may activate up to six. <laughs> what? You may activate up to six rooms in the lodge. Gain two power points. That's ridiculous. Six rooms. So you can summon a ton of stuff. You can... Activate already activated rooms. You could... Oh, God, you could do so much. Uh, draw two forgotten... Spe- okay, that is that is ludicrous. As a, <laughs> you're, you're, I know you're spending a forgotten spell, but you're getting two forgotten spells back. Uh, but they are random, rather than chosen from three cards. So, mm, I don't know. Necro Dragon. Or, until the end, of, instead of placing instability, you may gain the same amount of power. Wow. Max of six per turn. So that could be six power points, which is nice. One of your vacations gains plus one movement, plus six damage, and can act immediately. It will die at the end of the action. I was going to say, there's lots of cards that enable you to uh, use evocations. Place two in- in- instability uh, where it dies. Force of Gaia, that's awesome. One of your evocations gains plus five health to its maximum life. As long as the evocation is alive, you ignore ex- the effects of opponents' uh, active spells. <laughs> that's crazy. Wrath of God. Remove all evocations of the target mage and summon them all under your control and gain them. <laughs> oh my god. That is crazy. That situation could be amazing. Remove them and send all other mages to their cells, including yourself. Gain one for each evocation removed. Mm, it's like a, a hard restart, isn't it? Summon three Landishka in three different rooms. They can act immediately. Three skellies. Lose one power point to summon two bone knights, and one of them can act immediately. I'll tell you what, that was Skull Tour. <laughs> Select a mage without damage, that mage is defeated. You gain three, and that mage is trophy. <laughs> Swords of Plowshares. Wow. Target mage is defeated. You gain five. The target mage gains two power points. Each other mage that had at least one damage gains one. No one takes the mage's trophy. Okay. To be honest, let's. Uh, this where this would be ridiculous is someone's done all but one damage to a mage and all other mages apart from yourself have made damage on them <laughs> you defeat that mage you get the 5 VP that mage yeah of course gets 2 VP and then um, and then some 1 VP but no one gets the trophy so you're stealing that trophy away that's quite cool all other mages in play lose uh, or discard one uh, card from their hand or from the ones they played, you may add these cards to your hand, then gain two power points. So you gain them forever, I presume. Doesn't say give them back. Move up to six instability in a lodge as you wish between rooms, then place two in a room of your choice. I love it. Astral Convergence. Summon three Malcodia in the target room, two of them act immediately. Infernal Pact, this is. You can cast a spell from your hand. Then you cast all your ready spells in the order you prefer. (laughs) What? Game? That's awesome. 
Rose Guardian, some below in the black rooms, and some. Oh, we've we've already said that one. Death Delirium. Inflict three damage to models in play that already have one. Is this one I started with? Yes, that's the one I started with. They are nice. Uh, if you want, there is a shop in Belgium you will, who will have them soon. I, th- I think uh, shops will... Uh, I mean, I use uh, Chaos Cards and Zatu. And uh, they've, they've all got them on the site. They just haven't... They've, they've talked about pre-order. So they're not quite in stock yet. So I'm sure I'll be able to get hold of them in retail. Um, and there's absolutely no rush for that. I've got lots to paint <laughs> as it is um, from here. Okay, guys, if there's no other requests, I'm going to finish this unboxing live stream. All I can say is apologies again for the fact that um, I started the, the, the official uh, live stream without you. Uh, so I do apologize about that. Um, but just going through that sheer volume of quality expansion components. And I think that's the key word, quality. I mean, when do you get... Uh, this much extra schools of magic that, that extends the game so much in a game with Kickstarter and stretch goals. Stretch goals tend to be just aesthetic things that just make it look a little bit better. Yeah, you can get extra material as well, of course, but um, to have all these extra schools of magic just enhances the game, makes it so replayable, um, and then of course all the mages, all of the plastic, the extra game modes. Absolutely love it. Okay, if there are no requests, I am going to try and organise this a little bit more. Um, I think the small cards can all go down here. Um, I'm pretty happy with putting these here, and then every th- every other card will just go straight across here. I think that's how I'm going to uh, store it. I think maybe we will store cards going this way as well, going down here. Wow. Whoops, well, easy. Just want to check. I think you're given all of the core six schools of magic. I just want to check. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, you are. So you're given all of the core reprints schools uh, schools of magic. You get all the uh, quests and the um, the event cards reprinted and redone, which is, which is really nice. What's your request? You're going to say, can I have your copy? <laughs> Send me your copy. <laughs> What's your uh, request? And I'm happy to abide. Hehehehe. <laughs> Paint the three pig men with the colour of the Donald the Duck nephew. <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay, so. <laughs> oh, the pig men. That's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, I think. to in My personal preference, by the way, of first painting miniature is going to be Ezio. I've been me. I've been wanting to paint this since I saw him. Uh, since I saw they, that that was going to come along, uh, that that's that's my preference to the one that I want to paint. Okay, guys, um, we're going to leave the live stream there. Again, apologies about the uh, <laughs> the issue at the start, and thank you for those who who, who hang on um, until an hour later. Uh, this will record, however, this will be recorded, so you'll be able to watch it at your ledger um, through YouTube. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please uh, do like, subscribe, leave your comments. What are you looking forward to? What do you wish you? Uh, what are you going to paint first? What schools of magic are you going to try out or want to try out first of all? So I'm going to go on to the solo uh, live stream in about five minutes time, five ten minutes time. I've got to deal out the board. Um, I'm not going to use the new rooms. I'm not going to use the new rooms. I'm just going to use the uh, uh, the standard core game rooms and we'll see how it goes so bye for now and enjoy your copy when it arrives thanks for watching